If you look very closely at the face of Lady Liberty, you can clearly see that the famous statue was inspired by none other than 50s pop star Elvis Presley. Nah, I'm just messing with you. The Statue of Liberty was designed by Frederick Auguste Bertoli 60 years before Elvis was even born. Hey, don't be cruel. People have different opinions about who really inspired the face of Lady Liberty. According to one theory, the model for her was the beautiful Isabella Boyer. Isabella was born in 1841 to a wealthy family in Paris. When she turned 22, she moved to New York to marry an American entrepreneur and became a socialite. Isabella eventually moved home to Paris, where she met the famous sculptor Bertoldi. She was 38 at that time and still a strikingly beautiful woman. It was around this time that she was rumored to have modeled for Bartoli's designs of the Statue of Liberty. Now, many people believe that Bartoli modeled the face of Lady Liberty after someone much closer to him, his own mother, Augusta Charlotte Bartoli. She was the youngest of Charlotte's four children. She had a close relationship with his mother throughout his life, so it would make sense that he would want to dedicate one of his most famous works to her. Lady Liberty was created as a beacon of hope and strength for immigrants arriving to the new land. To Bartholdi, his own mother also represented these things. Charlotte raised her children as a single mother and encouraged them to pursue their dreams. There's another theory that suggests that Lady Liberty might not be modeled after a Western white woman like previously thought. As a young man, Bartholdi went on a trip to Egypt. And after seeing the pyramids, he was inspired to create colossal sculptures. Older and more successful, Bartholdi returned to Egypt to propose a new sculpture at the entrance of the Suez Canal. The sculpture was to be called Egypt Carrying the Light to Asia and depicted a cloaked figure holding a torch to guide travelers through the canal. <laughs> Sound familiar yet? In Bartholdi's original sketch, the face of the cloaked figure was modeled after an Egyptian peasant. Eventually, the money ran dry, and the sculpture wasn't commissioned after all. Bartholdi later recycled the design of the sculpture, changing the image of a young peasant to a western-looking woman, creating the iconic statue that we know today. Another theory suggests that Lady Liberty might not even be a lady at all. Author and Statue of Liberty scholar Elizabeth Mitchell believes that Bartholdi did model Lady Liberty's face after a family member, but not his mother. Upon studying the statue's face, Elizabeth noted that Charlotte Bartholdi had a slightly different face structure than Lady Liberty. In the early years of his career, Bartholdi was a bust maker, known for his accuracy, so these slight discrepancies didn't make sense. When Elizabeth came across pictures of Bartholdi's brother, Jean Charles, she noticed that his face bore a striking resemblance to Lady Liberty. It's a popular myth that the Statue of Liberty was a gift to the United States from France. But in fact, the statue was completely crowdfunded by activist Edouard de Labouret. <laughs> he was a huge supporter of Bartholdi's work and encouraged the French people to raise money for the statue. Meanwhile, the American public crowdfunded the money to pay for the pedestal. Bartoli completed the iconic torch-bearing arm of Lady Liberty years before finishing the rest of the design. The arm was then displayed in Madison Square Garden to encourage the public to donate to the statue. Fundraising from the American public proved to be difficult, until publisher Joseph Pulitzer stepped in. He started a drive for donations and promised that each contributor would receive an honorary shout-out in his famous newspaper, The New York World. This attracted over 120,000 donations and raised enough funds to complete the statue. The statue and pedestal together cost $500,000 to build. In today's money, that would be over $10 million. The statue was completed in France and then shipped to America, split into over 300 copper pieces, each packed in wooden boxes. Over 200,000 Americans waited to greet the ship, carrying Lady Liberty as it arrived in New York Harbor. The statue was assembled on Bedloe's Island, which is now known as Liberty Island. A mistake might have been made when the Statue of Liberty was assembled. During an inspection in 1982, workers realized that her head had been installed two feet off-center. Lady Liberty wasn't always the iconic green color that we know today. 
The statue originally consisted of copper skin over iron framework, making Lady Liberty appear a bright bronze color. Over the years, the copper began to oxidize, forming a protective layer called patina and creating a bright green hue. It took 30 years for Lady Liberty to turn fully green. And we all know it's not easy, you know, being green. If Bartoli had had his way, Lady Liberty would never have been green, or even copper for that matter. The architect originally intended for the statue to be a lighthouse. In order for the lighthouse to be visible at night, Bartoli planned to wrap the entire sculpture in gold leaf so that it would glow under the moonlight. This idea was rejected because it would have been far too expensive. Speaking of the statue's size, Bartoli was assisted in his designs of Lady Liberty's structure by Gustav Eiffel. He was a famous structural engineer who, you might have guessed from his name, is famous for designing the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel designed the framework and structures that support the Statue of Liberty. New York isn't the only city to have its own Lady Liberty. You can find a much smaller version of the sculpture within the entrance hall to this famous museum in Paris. This mini Lady Liberty was crafted by Bortoli shortly after the original statue was erected for the 1900 Paris Exposition, a world fair held in France to celebrate the achievements of the previous century. Shortly down the road in front of this famous Paris tunnel is the Flame of Liberty. This is a full-size replica of the flame from Lady Liberty's torch covered in gold leaf. This monument was gifted to France in 1989 from donors across the world as a thank you for the Statue of Liberty and as a symbol of the Franco-American friendship. About 4.5 million people visit the famous statue every year. By comparison, around 3.25 million people visit the London Eye each year. This makes the Statue of Liberty one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. Visiting Lady Liberty is also a good workout. Visitors need to climb 354 steps to reach the crown. I've been there, it's really cool. Inside the crown, there are 25 windows, providing stunning panoramic views of New York City. It's also much smaller than you thought it would be. Lady Liberty's crown is adorned with seven individual spikes. Some say these spikes represent the seven oceans and continents of the world, bearing the universal concept of liberty. Others think they represent rays of sunshine. Almost 100 years after the statue was erected, Lady Liberty's torch was given an upgrade. In 1984, the statue's original copper torch was replaced with a new one covered in 24 karat gold leaf. The torch is the only place not accessible to visitors due to damage it previously sustained, making it unsafe for visitors. Lady Liberty is sometimes referred to as the mother of immigrants. In the 19th century, over 9 million immigrants arrived in the United States. They arrived by boat, and the Statue of Liberty was the first thing they would see of the new land. At 305 feet tall, when the Statue of Liberty was first built, she was the tallest iron structure in the world. Of course, that has now been far surpassed. The tallest building in the world, Dubai's Burj Khalifa, has a staggering height of over 2,700 feet. That's almost nine times taller than the Statue of Liberty. The famous sculpture is also waterproof. Lady Liberty is struck by around 600 bolts of lightning every year since she was built. Some photographers have been lucky enough to catch those moments. She's also survived hurricanes, ocean changes, and countless storms. The Statue of Liberty was designed to sway in the wind. During heavy winds, Lady Liberty can sway up to 3 inches in any direction, and her torch can sway 5. 